Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Well, let's go. Alright, I've got a spicy meatball here in Kalia. Basically a difficult to cast 3 mana 3-3 three, three with Flying and Vigilance. I don't think the ability is going to come up too often. I guess there's a couple angels we can find, but overall uh, probably not an amazing card to start with. What else do we have? Master Splicer is quite good again. Some okay red cards, sleep paralysis, but nothing exciting. So I think we're leaning Master Splicer here. Alright, well, Aerialist is a pretty good follow-up here, so is Gravedigger. Both cards are quite excellent. Um, there's some okay white cards, but none that I would take over the black ones here. So it's between Gravedigger and Aerialist pretty much. Aerialist in black-white especially is going to be at its best, so I think Aerialist, if we're going to be black-white, is going to be even better than the Gravedigger. Of course, we're not committed to black-white, but uh, we've got some good incentives to make that happen. So yeah, let's give Aerialist a shot. This pack is less exciting. There's some okay cards in other colors, Winged Words, Rabbit Bite. In black-white we've got War Chief and Captain, Raise the Alarm even, so some playable cards, but nothing incredibly exciting. I'm not the biggest fan of the Undead Servants. I think we need to try and wield those instead of picking them third pick. So there's a couple options. If we end up in the black-white life gain deck, the Raise the Alarm Inspiring Captain is less important than it would be in a different deck. But of course we could still be kind of a go white deck as well, and then both Captain and Raise are fine. I could just take a card in another color and stay open, although I'm not sure which card that would be. Could be the Winged Words, could be a Rabbit Bite. So we've got a wealth of options here. Alright, chat likes a Raise the Alarm, followed by Winged Words, followed by a Rabbit Bite. Eh, we'll stick to white for now. Had we taken Winged Words, then a second Winged Words is probably the pick here. Now I could take a second Razy Alarm and kind of solidify or go white theme a little bit. I could take Aerial Assault as playable removal, bit of synergy with Aerialist. Um, Necromancer is fine too. So again, we've got some options. Of course, the more Razy Alarms we have, the more we can build around them. And cards like uh, Captain and Inspire Charge become better. Aerial Assault has a bit of synergy with Aerialists, and we could end up with quite a few flyers in white. So that's also an option. So it's probably between the two white cards, now that we committed with the raise. If we had taken Winged Words in the previous pack, I think I would take the second one over one of the white cards. But um, I guess we want to kind of commit even more on the, the white plan here. Yeah, we could still pivot into green and take an overcome, for example. All right, we'll uh, double down. Alright, God's Willing is excellent. Not necessarily at its best with our Go White plan, since protecting a token doesn't do much. But it's still a pretty valuable card. Chaplain would also synergize with the Aerialist, so that's also an option. But if we end up taking some of the more expensive Angels, then God's Willing is a great way to protect those. Alright, speaking of Angels, there's Dawning Angel. Loyal Pegasus would also be an option if we're trying to be low to the ground aggressive with the Raise the Alarm and like Loyal Pegasus flying over. So it's actually a decision here between the two flyers. I don't think we're considering anything else at the moment. So how do we see ourselves? Kind of more as a mid-rangey life gain deck? Or more as kind of a beatdown, low to the ground aggressive deck? Pegasus is maybe going to be better if we move out of black and end up like red-white aggro or green-white with Overcome. Angel's gonna be maybe a bit better if we end up in the black-white life gain deck. So we'll go with Angel. Well, I don't think I can pass up on Audacious Thief. Captain is great with double raise the alarm, but Thief is so good. And I could definitely use another three drop. A bit of a sign that black is open, Soul Salvage and Thief pretty late. Uh, but again, could also make a case for Chaplain and Captain, since that synergizes with Aerialist and Raise the Alarm. Alright, I guess uh, we'll trust in Rafael Levy here and take our first Battalion Foot Soldier, hoping to pick up a few of them. Blood Burglar would also be fine as it synergizes with Aerialist. But let's see if we can pick up a couple of these. And 
I guess Stone Golem synergizes with the Master Splicer. Alternatively, I could, like, speculate on a Goblin Smuggler. Nah, let's uh, take Stone Golem. Alright, wield Aerial Assaults. I think that's reasonable now. Still don't love it in this deck, since we seem to be kind of the aggressor, and getting a creature tapped down from the opponent is not always trivial. But it still has a bit of synergy with Aerialists. We've got some other flyers. Bladebrand has a bit more synergy in the deck currently, with Thief and Raise the Alarm. Assault could be okay if we want more life gain synergies. And if we take Assault, then we can potentially still pivot into a second color. Whereas if we take Bladebrand, we commit more to black, which still could be fine. So this one's a very close call as well. I'll take the Bladebrand. Alright, wheel the Chaplain, that's nice. Alright, so let's see where the second pack leads us. Answer is not very far. Mystic Forge, pretty awful. Uh, War Chief Playable, if unexciting. Moment of Heroism, nothing special. Could take a blue card like Cloud Concealer and try and move into a different color. Alright, don't mind the Cutthroats. Plays well with our tokens. I guess Griffin Protector is also quite decent with a double Raze Alarm to pump it up. And gotta hope to wield the Inspire Charge. So here is between Cutthroat and Protector. I guess I like Protector. Scourger would also be good with our Go White plan as kind of a finisher. But I think I still like the four drops over it. I think I'm leaning Protector, just have a nice big flyer. Ooh. Well, now we've got a reason to move into another color. Iron Root Warlord is pretty strong. Can hope to wheel Captain, maybe Blossoming Sands for fixing. Could even splash it if we pick up some mana fixing here. It's gotta be worth it. How about a Woodland Champion? Great synergy with a Warlord and Double Racy Alarm. That seems good. Not really giving up on much. Alright, so it looks like we're gonna try and pivot into green. Bunch of good red cards. Guess I'll take a Sentinel over Inquisitor. Probably don't need Vorse Claw. Like Soulmender would synergize with black with Aerialists, but we might want to consider pivoting in green. It's kind of close. Like we've got two good reasons to be green, and we've got two good reasons to be black with Thief and uh, Aerialist, basically. And don't really care about the Servant or the Abomination. War Chief is also kind of whatever. Could just take an Angelic Gift. Nothing special here, but it has a bit of synergy with uh, Thief if we do end up in black. Giving Warlord flying can also be a big deal. I think I'll go with a Gift. Uh, how good is Pattern Matcher here? Could still end up with a few duplicates, of course, in the last pack. The other option would be Cutthroat, or if we want to try green, Tracker could be okay. Although it doesn't find Razy Alarm, so it's pretty mediocre there too. Probably still give Pattern Matcher a try. It's also Golem for the Master Splicer. Got a lot of good cards here. There's Angel as the good cards synergizes in black-white. There's a second foot soldier in case we end up with a third to make those good. And we do want a couple of these here to make our go-white plan functional. And there's a barons in case we want to be black-white splash green. Since there's no black card I want to splash, so green-white splash black is not really an option. And it also synergizes with the aerialist. So I've got a couple of options. If we end up in green-white, then the Angel is mostly just a 3-mana 2-2 two -two flyer. have a couple of life gain synergies with just Chaplain and Dawning Angel, but not that many. Um, both Angel and Foot Soldier are good 3-drops. Foot Soldier, we kind of need the third copy before it's actually good. If we do end up in black-white life gain, I'm gonna regret taking the Angelic Gift over the Soul Mender. Although we haven't seen any Epicures of Blood at 5 mana either. Nothing here I want. 
right, that will the Inspire Charge. There's also Evolving Wilds for fixing, in case we do want to try three colors. We don't have any Inspired Captains yet. This would be our first Inspired Charge. Land is basically to splash green and black-white for the Warlord, which is, of course, a great card. I guess I'll take a land. All right, got uh, Blossoming Sands on the wheel, so now splashing green is a lot more manageable. Missing out on a Soul Salvage, that's fine. All right, wield the Soul Mender, great. And then our last pack, not a pretty mediocre pack for us. Because yeah, at this point it looks like we're going to be black, white, splash, green. There's no good white cards in the pack. And the only black card I'm considering is Bladebrand, since I don't really want to Undead Servant, even if we have two or three. Alright, got to take the Pacifism here, good removal. Not a Racy Alarm, hopefully wheels. And pretty happy with Thief, although there's also Apicure. So let's take a look at our deck here. Thief is quite good with the Angelic Gifts. So it doesn't look like the Foot Soldier is going to be good enough in this deck. Don't think we're splashing for Woodland Champion. So this is kind of what we're working with. So Foot Soldier unlikely to make the cuts. Don't mind cutting Griffin Sentinel. I wouldn't mind picking up an equipment here. And then we need some more duplicates for the Pattern Matcher. Which also helps if we take Thief. So yeah, I think I'm down with Thief. Alright, could take even more mana fixing. To make that splash even easier. I don't think I want Pegasus now that we're kind of settled into black-white and not super aggro. And then hope to wield the second Chaplain to go with our Pattern Matcher. So yeah, I'll take a Blossoming Sands. Also synergizes quite well with the Aerialist. Alright, now we might want to take Epicure over Aerial Assault. We are a bit light on removal, I suppose. And then think I'm taking Vulture or 3 drops are looking good already. Don't have any particular synergies. I guess it potentially gains a bit of life. So it's not the worst. So yeah, we could go for the removal spell. I could go for the Apicure. There's a chance we wheel another Apicure. So maybe I shouldn't take it too highly since we already have a couple good fives. Eh, I'll take Assault. Ooh, nice. Ancestral Blade is excellent. So definitely taking that. Another gain line seems pretty good here. Uh, Cutthroat's also fine with Double Thief. But I'm still kind of lacking the, the land here. So good with Aerialists, just being able to grow it for free. What does Cutthroat do for us? It's okay with the tokens. Let's take a land. Alright, so I can speculate on the Soulmender and hope to get uh, some Apicures on the wheel. I would definitely play two Apicures if we get the Soulmender here. Uh, Fencing Ace has a bit of synergy with Ancestral Blade. It's okay with Blade Brand. First Strike plus Death Touch to kill anything. Could take another Stone Golem, so we have another target for Pattern Matcher, but I think we're mainly looking at these two, since we're somewhat likely to wheel one of the Epicures that can fit into the 5-drop slot. Like, if we get two Epicures, then I would definitely take Soulmender, but we're not that guaranteed to get two. We might not even get any, in which case I'm probably going to need the Fencing Ace. Yeah, I'll take the Ace. Nothing here we want. Might play another one. Are we not going to wheel any Epicures? That would be unfortunate. Alright. Wow, we didn't wheel any Epicures. That's sad. Alright, so didn't quite get there on the life gain synergy. The only life gain payoff card is Aerialist. So don't think we want these Soul Menders. Also didn't quite get there on the Anthem effects. Not a single Inspiring Captain, no Inspired Charges. So our Go White theme is pretty medium, our life gain theme is med pretty medium, and our card quality overall isn't very high. So this deck is kind of a pile.
but we'll try and make it work. Uh, what do we have in the sideboard? Could play another Angelic Gifts. Gauntlets has a bit of synergy with the Fencing Ace, but still not a fan of it. I guess it's okay with Chaplain as well. Yeah, I mean, maybe our deck is just bad enough that we should just play a bad card and try and get lucky. Bit of synergy with the Sentinel too. Yeah, I guess I'm sold. Did we get there on the Pattern Matcher? Not really. Just two Chaplains and two Thieves. It's not... Uh, not great here, but I'm probably still playing it as a 3-3, that's a Golem for Splicer. Could cut the Stone Golem itself. In terms of fixing, one Forest to go with the Evolving Wilds, and then we've got four green sources, so this Warlord should be pretty easy to cast. And we probably want to play the Gain Lands anyway for the Aerialists. Do have a Gods Willing to protect uh, Fencing Ace plus Gauntlets of Light kind of uh, angle of the deck. So that's nice. We could consider cutting a land, or curve is kind of low, so I could see cutting a land here. So let's take a quick look at the mana base. We do need double black for aerialists, so that's a reason to potentially play more swamps. Right now we have five, six, seven black sources, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut a planes for a swamp. Six, seven, eight black, five, six, seven, eight, nine white. Should be plenty. And then, uh, yeah, plenty of green as well. Play Chaplain, since there's a chance we can go Swamp into Aerialist and then connect with it. No attacks. Now let's just play Angel. Still no attacks. Uh, we do have another Chaplain in the deck, so Pattern Matcher seems kind of nice. And we'll attack. That's fine. And a swamp, so now the Aerialist is an option as well. So yeah, I guess Chaplain plus Aerialist is fine. Don't really have any great attacks on the ground. I could attack first. If they double block, I can Blade Brand. Is that something we're interested in? Could be okay, although then I don't get to play Aerialists. So I think I would rather wait. Fire is a big one, but we've got ways to deal with it. Alright, so I'm not hating our position. So I'm probably just gonna blade equip aerialists and then keep a blade brand. And then next turn... I can drop the Sentinel. Keeping Blade equipped is a bit suspicious, maybe. Since otherwise I could have made a 4-4 Pattern Matcher, which trades for the Fire Elemental. But I'm kind of happy just cycling the Blade Brand too. 
Now Aerial Assault is alive. Ooh, hello. And I kind of like gifting the Chaplain so we can keep growing the Aerialist every turn instead of the Pattern Matcher. And then I can Assault on the Smuggler and then uh, get an extra life as well. Alright, perfect. And now Aerialist will be out of range of a Reduced Ashes as well. Seems good. Uh oh. Well, from deer to dinosaurs. at least if they fight, they can't take out the aerialists. Takes out the chaplain instead. Their claws, you're done. Okay. I think I'm okay with the trade. Could also block with the chaplain to grow the aerialist one more. Alternatively, I could keep Chaplain, move the blade to Chaplain, have a 2-4, which they can still double block, but then I can Blade Brand to kill both creatures, so that seems nice. So yeah, let's actually do that. I think the one I like the most is move Blade onto Chaplain, attack both I guess Aerialist at Vivian, Chaplain at their face, and if they double block Chaplain, then I can Blade Brand. And I should play my land first. I guess it doesn't matter. Since I'm attacking Vivian with Aerialist anyway. And if I drew into an untapped land, I might have wanted to play Sentinel plus Blade Brand, so yeah, I think I messed up by playing a land first. Not a blade brand, so didn't get punished. And yeah, seven eights. It's not easy to deal with for a green red deck here. Two turn clock, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, bloodthirsty aerialists. If you can kind of keep growing it, it's a pretty strong threat. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll keep this. So I was gonna play the Sands, but now I'll just fetch for a Plains. Thin out the deck a bit and keep Sands for after Angel or in case we pick up the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Uh, we do have a double black card in the deck with Aerialist, and if we draw that, we definitely want to be able to play it and then play Sands afterwards. So we should definitely play F Swamp instead of Forests. And then I'll play Angel of Vitality. As it hits a bit harder. Could make the case that we should like keep the gods willing to protect Angel, but if I'm protecting the other Angel, that's also fine. All right. Well, sadly, God's Willing doesn't help in this situation since we can name protection from artifacts. Pacifism could work. Might be a little bit early to use that one though. So I might just chill this turn, play Sands and Griffin, and then Griffin can start attacking. Although I guess the Raptor holds off Dawning Angel as well, so it's kind of annoying. Maybe I should just pacify that. 
Yeah, I guess that's fine. And I think I'm okay playing the land since I want to play Dawning Angel next turn. Don't have uh, God's Willing up, but there was no sequence where we could have kept it up here. That's fine. Four for Angel Vitality, not bad. It's gonna take a nap, but God's Willing can still unlock it. Won't be able to save it this turn, but next turn. So get in for three. Thief doesn't do a whole lot, so it might be better just to play the Sentinel here. As it also blocks the tracker. And I want to be able to God's Willing here instead of playing Thief, just so I can attack with Angel next turn and kill them, since we've got eight in the air. Alright, that uh, messes with our plan a little bit. Still gonna unlock Angel here. Warchief seems okay. So Angel can attack. What happens if I attack with everyone? Then Boreal goes on Dawning Angel, Tracker on a token, and they take six down to two. Doesn't seem quite worth it. Yeah, it's a bit of a visual bug here. The angel is still in chains. Alright, that shouldn't matter too much. Can just attack with all next turn and then I think they're dead. Well, I didn't think we were going to get up to a 4-4 Angel Vitality, but there we go. Opponent had a slow start, never pressure or life total, and uh, gained just enough life. Alright, the sands definitely keep. Question is, what do we play? Do we save the Scout Barons for the Aerialists? Probably not, since we've got Angelic Gift. Just go turn 2 Chaplain, turn 3 Aerialist, and then turn 4 Gift the uh, Chaplain and start attacking. There is an argument for like sandbagging the aerialist, but the difference between 3 toughness and 4 toughness isn't huge. There's no 3 damage burn spells in red green. That's fine. Perfect. Oh boy. Can one more combo with a fencing ace next turn. Now of course if they have a rabbit bite, the scorpion still means they get to kill aerialists. And Chandra's Outrage does it too. All this implies they have a pump spell, but I don't really mind if they kill the fencing ace. Because then I can just gauntlets the chaplain instead. And if they spend their turn 4 casting a growth cycle, they're likely not killing the aerialists, so I think we're happy. We've got some options. Uh, I guess Dawning Angel is probably the best play. Next turn with the gauntlets, we should have lethal. This time I'm taking it.
I'll look at our combo deck going off. Alright, maybe I should add another wings to the deck. It is pretty nice with Chaplin being able to give it flying, although we've been pretty lucky to draw the Aerialists a few times here. So like the Racy Alarm is good with the Blade Brand part of our deck, but I could see Angelic Gift being better. Keep one alarm. I think we've got a keeper. Lots of cheap plays we can make. Some synergy between the tokens and blade brands. And all three colors. We're happy trading this for the Burglar. And we even drew the Warlord, so we've got some nice synergies here. And gorging Vulture. Alright. The land is great. Can't quite play the Warlord yet until we find the planes. But I could play Sentinel. Lines up pretty poorly against a Cutthroat. So the alternative would be Chaplain plus Equip or Racy Alarm plus Equip. I guess Chaplain Equip is probably better. And then next turn, if I draw land, I could play Sentinel, move the blade. But missing the green. Yeah, let's attack. And I imagine if they had a cutthroat, they would have played it. They also seem to have passed a turn pretty quickly. Alright, there are three colors. Says go. And there's a plane, so now I could play the warlord. Should have attacked with the Sentinel too, maybe. Although that's a little awkward if they Blade Brand. And do I move the blade? I think I should move it to the Sentinel here. That way we can block the Vulture and if they Blade Brand or Cutthroat we at least kill the Vulture. Opponent sacks Caves, that's a good sign. Still nothing. So what if I pacifism plus raise the alarm? I get to hit for five, six, seven, eight. Kills them pretty quickly. Don't need to pacify is a thing. It's just if they have a blade brand, I don't want them killing the warlord. So maybe the plays just attack, see what they do, and then raise the alarm just to pump the warlord or just play thief. Could play thief pre-combat, of course, to grow warlord as well, but then we don't have any tricks up our sleeve. I guess I'll just play thief here. Keep developing our board. And then send everyone. They got nothing. Probably move this to the thief. Yeah, opponent seems a little mana screwed. Although the life chanter is pretty strong. But we have ways to deal with it. Pacifism looks good. I could Blade Brand 2 here. Maybe that's better than raise 7, 8, 9, 10. Keep the blade on the thief. 
All right, sweet. Well, we're kind of on a roll here. All right, we're missing the white mana this time, so I don't think we're keeping... This is much better. Kind of want to keep everything, but got to let something go. I might just ditch the Aerial Assault. Could be greedy, but we get to Curve Chaplain into Aerialist into Angelic Gift Chaplain. The turn one Fairy Miscreants. If we get a free attack with the Chaplain, we can also grow the Aerialist right away, so that would be nice. Alright, if they've got a Convolute, they've got a Convolute. Could just be an Unsummon. That's fine. And a griffin. So they can't really attack here with the miscreants. Otherwise we get to grow the aerialist again. Pacifism, also useful. Alright, so unless we draw God's Willing, aerialists will be out of commission for a while. Not drawing land, sadly. Could cantrip with the Angelic Gift, just to hope to draw land, and then I can still play another Chaplain if it's a Plains. We also have quite a few tap lands in the deck, so getting those out of the way and then play a 4-drop next turn could be beneficial. So I think I'm gifting here. And then... I could keep this on defense in order to hope to block the Protector, but they're likely pumping this. And uh, trading one damage for one damage when we're gaining one seems fine. Also grows Aerialist in case we eventually find a God's Willing. And then we'll have a enormous Aerialist that can attack. Alright, there's a lance, that's useful. Now I could cast a 4 mana pacifism on this boreal elemental, which would be reasonable. Uh, already drew both copies of Chaplain, so there's nothing to pattern match. Could play the Master Splicer just to add some stuff to the board. I think I like answering the elemental though. And given that they still have two cards in hand, it's pretty likely that they can pump the Protector. So I'm still attacking. Once their hand becomes more empty, it becomes more tempting to leave Chaplain back as a blocker for Protector. Right, planes. So I can play Protector, which... Trades for Angel, that's okay. The card we want to draw the most here is probably God's Willing to unlock our Aerialists. Portal of Sanctuary. Well, that also bounces a Pacifism back to our hands, so... I guess that's fine. And a Blade Brand, that's useful. I suppose Master Splicer progresses our game plan the best. Can't really afford to attack with the Griffin, sadly. Gotta play defense. And now we've got a 4 4 that can start doing some damage. Alright, we'll take three. 
and then Bladebrand plus Chaplin can maybe trade off for a big flyer as well. This loop gains him a bunch of life. Suppose I could also pacify the Griffin Protector and then Blade Brand away the Boreal Elemental, is that better? Having to pay the two extra mana for pacifism each time we try and enchant the Boreal is kind of annoying. Yeah, I guess that's maybe better. And then I get to play a Fencing Ace as well. Because with the portal, they're essentially guaranteed to have a 3-4 griffin attacking every time. So it's kind of the same as Boreal. Given that they have portal, I guess Bladebrand doesn't quite work the way we want it to. Because they can just bounce the Boreal back to their hand. They would lose out quite a bit of tempo doing that. But we're never really forcing them into a spot where they're blocking. So the Bladebrand's always going to be bad. Unless they somehow block Fencing Ace. I'm still cycling the Bladebrand, I'm still drawing a card. So I think I'm okay doing this and then force them to bounce with portal alright, Pwn lets the trade happen that's fine it's also possible they missed that they could do that because unlike the altar you, you can activate the portal at instant speed during your own turn I could also use Raise the Alarm as, as kind of a combo trick to grow the Griffin, which could be pretty fun. Because I'm not sure what the opponent's game plan here is, if they're just trying to gain for life a turn, if they're actually going to start attacking with the Dawning Angel. I guess for now I'm fine attacking with Griffin. It's just bad if they have an Aerial Assault. And then I'll just play Pattern Matcher as 4-4 four, four here, thanks to the Master Splicer. Probably should have played this pre combat then, but I didn't make up my mind yet. Yeah, I missed out on two damage. And then keep Raise the Alarm as kind of a combat trick to grow the Griffin during the opponent's turn. Yeah, that's a problem. You can also just make a Master Splicer token every turn with a portal. So we need this Master Splicer to die, otherwise we're definitely gonna lose. Yeah, missing out on that 2 damage could definitely matter. Maybe I should attack with everyone, hoping to get them with the Raise the Alarm, pumping the Griffin Protector. But I'm not beating the portal in the long run, so maybe I should just YOLO this. Yeah, the, the Raise the Alarm makes two chum blockers, I guess. Alright, now they're just dead, I think. Alright, so the two missed damage didn't end up uh, punishing us too badly, but yeah, definitely should have made up my mind before uh, sending in the Griffin. Alright, 5-0. Oh. Definitely doing a lot better than I would have hoped for. Well, I've got a fine opening hand here. Thief with kind of gift and God's willing to enhance it. Alright, we've got the Aerialist as well, so lots of powerful options, potentially. Alright. 
Chandra could be scary, especially if they have some cheap instant or sorcery to get back, like a shock. Not our gifts. Probably gotta play the thief here. Start drawing some extra cards. They've got their own. So... Can't get in for... Two damage, we get to kill the skeleton. Or one damage. Alright, lands are good. I could attack if her opponent blocks with their Thief, God's Willing, to save mine. And then still play Aerialists. Opponent's more likely to chump with Skeleton, I agree. Than they are to trade. And I will try and pressure the Chandra. Alright, Nodder Plains is good. Opens up some options for next turn. So we've got God's Willing up, which is pretty important. And next turn we can maybe take out Chandra. Say hi to my fiery friends. Still blocking the Thief. If they Blade Brand, I can Protection from Black and save Aerialists. If they Cutthroat, I can again prevent it from being targeted. Just another thief, that's fine. Alright. Alright, that's nice too. So I want to be able to take out this Chandra, and I want to be able to play defense, so I think just putting Angelic Gift on Thief, and then just playing the gain land for now, keeping up God's Willing is reasonable. And then next turn I can play Dawning Angel, still keep up God's Willing. Blade. No way to play the Blade and still keep up God's Willing, so we'll just attack. Pattern Matcher can find another Thief. Alright, so we're kind of doing it here. Alright, nothing. Yeah, I think we're gonna stick to the plan, play Angel, keep up God's Willing, so I'm not playing the Sands here. And I think now I can attack with the Aerialist as well. Alright, wow. That went surprisingly well. How are we 6-0 with this deck? I don't know. But uh, yeah, time for the final boss. Let's go. Alright, well, this is a bit of the issue with having Angelic Gift over Raise Your Alarm. I think if this Gift is a Raise Your Alarm, I can probably keep this hand. As it is, it's kind of sketchy. Like, I can cycle the Blade Brands to draw into some action, so it's still kind of close. Yeah, I mean, it's not the worst. Evolving Wilds can fetch a planes, I can cycle a Blade Brand if they play anything. Just need to hope to draw into an early creature, otherwise we're in trouble. I think on the draw I probably keep... We get a few looks at finding a creature. Yeah, that's a good one. 
So blocking, not the best if they have a blade brand. But they still want to attack anyway just to gain two. So I think I'm still obliging here. Make him show it. Right, pump spell also works. But that's an okay trade. Now we don't have a target for the, the blade brands as issue. But that's fine. Probably cycling the blade brand end of turn. Ooh, wow. Opponent went deep with Soren. And they have a vampire in play even. Well, this could be scary. Do have an aerial assault to answer it, but... Alright, Fencing Ace is nice. So now I can Fencing Ace and then keep a Blade Brand. And First Strike plus Death Touch will deal with the Burglar. Mind Rots, sure. I'll just discard two lands. So not the most effective Mind Rot in history. I think we gotta play the Sentinel here. Alright, I've got some pressure to try and kill the Sorin. If we find our green fixing, got four sources for the Warlords, then we're in good shape. And we can Jolly Gift the Fencing Ace to make sure it can keep attacking. No more Vampires for Sorin, and yeah, perfect. I think I'll cycle this. I could also keep it for the Warlord, but we're fine just making tokens with the Warlord. We don't necessarily have to attack with it. And I might draw something useful in the meantime. Suppose I could have attacked first and then cast a gift second main. Right, just a natural end to destroy that, that's fine. Alright, Potent doesn't have much going on. Although that's another vampire for Sorin. Could struggle to kill Sorin in time. Since if they put a counter on it, then the fencing ace no longer has a good attack. I bestow a mighty curse. You mortals never learn. We could get punished by another Mind Rolt here by playing out our land. But with the Warlord in play, we want to have a ton of mana to be able to make tokens. Yeah, Poin's got a ton of life to work with here, so... They have a lot of time to draw out of it. And if they answer the Warlord, then we're actually not uh, too far ahead. I wouldn't mind seeing an attack. Poin says go. Ancestral Blades, decent, since now I can equip the Fencing Ace. And it would trade for the Burglar, which is fine. And then I still have enough mana to make a token as well. And then the Warlord can attack too. Also, never mind if I equip the Fencing Ace and I can't activate Warlord. The problem here is basically if we attack with the Warlords and they have a pump spell for the Burglar, we end up losing it. Another Natural End, fair enough. Alright, Warlord attacks Sorin. Sentinel goes face, if they want to chump, that's fine by me. Could also just make sure to kill Sorin by sending everyone at it. So in case they do have, let's say, a pump spell as their last card to kill Warlord, we make sure to kill Sorin, otherwise we throw away a Fencing Ace if they have nothing. I don't think I throw away the Fencing Ace here. Uh-oh. Alright, they have the pump spell. That's bad. So now Sorin gets to live. I can make a token on the way out. Of 
Gotta hope that burglar goes sideways at some point so we can assault it. I bestow a mighty curse. Alright, that's reasonable. Yeah, I mean, if her opponent draws something relevant, we could be in trouble. And that definitely counts. Another vampire for Surin. So, yeah. Not killing Surin could come back to bite us. Could have sent everyone at it and sacrificed the fencing ace. They had one card in hand, and it turned out to be a second growth cycle. Pattern matcher doesn't match anything. Yeah, I just don't have any good attacks here. Opponent can just sit behind our Sorin, and that's kind of the drawback of aerial assaults. Yeah, we're gonna lose this game. Feels bad. I think I still play it just to be able to add more stuff to the board in case we find a removal spell to maybe open up some attacks. All right, pacifism, that's a good draw. So now we can pacify the aerialist and start pressuring Sorin with our flyers. You mortals never learn. Yeah, natural land would be good against pacifism. They can sacrifice the aerialist to the Sorin ability if they wanted to. Yeah, it's also possible I should have just again attacked with everyone, sacrificed Pattern Matcher just to make sure to kill Sorin. That might have been better actually, considering they can just sacrifice the Aerialist to kill our Aerialists. Bone Splinters instead. Alright, maybe they missed uh, Sorin interaction. Alright, maybe I should just send here at Sorin and get rid of it once and for all before they realize they can sack the Aerialists. Yeah, they could have another natural end in the deck and that's why they're not sacking the Aerialist yet. I think I want to get this over with. I could not send Pattern Matcher. If we draw the Gauntlets, then I guess Fencing Ace could be slightly better. We do have a Master Splicer in the deck, but I'm guessing this is fine. Alright, so given that our opponent clearly built around our sword so heavily, maybe we should have just dealt with it a lot sooner. Um, I think I hold the land in case of Fan Lurker, in case of an Angel of Vitality top deck, then I can gain two with the Barons. And don't need all the lands in play, don't think. Yeah, I mean, points at 34. We've got a pretty long road ahead of us, and we lost some of our best threats here in Warlords, Aerialists. So it's not going to be an easy way to win this game. Burglar's finally attacking, we'll take it. Indenture on the Aerialist. It's an interesting play. Right, let's kill this Burglar and then send in Pattern Matcher Sentinel. So this probably implies they have another Bone Splinter somewhere in their deck. The 1-1 one -one token is not doing much. Wish we still had our Ancestral Blade. Yeah, I think the, the first time where we didn't kill Sorin, it was reasonable. But uh, the turn where we pacified Aerialist, I think I should have definitely attacked with everyone. Otherwise, they could have just sacked the Aerialist to kill one of our Flyers, which would have been bad. But we didn't really get punished for it. I think I'll hold on to the race. We're not attacking with everyone, don't have any anthem effects, and if I draw the Griffin Sentinel, Griffin, the four mana Griffin, then we might want to keep it as a way to pump it. Yeah, they could also have something like a blood soaked altar that they're trying to set up.
So we're hoping to draw another flyer. The ground is pretty stalled. Well, we found a Griffin Protector. That was the card we were hoping to find. I guess Battermatcher can still get in there. Alright, so next turn we can pump the Griffin, start making some progress on the opponent's life total. But yeah, if they ever find something to sacrifice the Aerialist, we're in trouble. What's the reasoning for casting Raise the Alarm right now? It is if they somehow kill the Griffin, then I get in my two extra damage right now. If they somehow unlock the Aerialists, it would lose the counters it currently has, but it would gain a counter from the Indenture. So it would be a 3-4. So then the Griffin can, with a plus 2, plus 2 from Raise the Alarm, still kill it. So I think I'm supposed to not play Raise yet. Plus you have the, like, Siphon the Griffin, I can save it. So I think I should hold it. Should have all the lands we need. The only Mana Sink Warlord is gone. So I'll hold the lands. want to keep this one for the Angel of Vitality. Uh-oh. Well, I guess we're no longer attacking on the ground. But that's also a way to potentially deck the opponents. But the problem with, like, forcing them to draw cards with Reclamation is that they might draw into something to unlock the Aerialist, which could kill us before we kill them. But it's definitely possible that decking them now is our best win condition as opposed to dealing damage. Might actually be able to close out the game in time with that. And a Warchief. I guess I should have played a Warchief pre-combat, missed out on one damage from Protector again. Yeah, Protector kinda punishes you for playing stuff second main phase, which is usually the correct play. But not now. Oh well. And then I'll play the Swamp so we keep up uh, Raise the Alarm. I can block Skeleton with Sentinel without killing it, so we don't let them draw with Reclamation. I could take one. Hopefully your opponent doesn't draw a bunch of spiders or removal spells. Yeah, if I take one it also grows Warchief, so I'm probably fine taking one. I think I'll just block like this. Thief. Gotta be careful not to draw too many cards, but I will play it just to pump the Griffin. Alright, we got our opponent below 20 life. The end is in sight. Let's hope they miss on a couple more turns. Ouch. That's probably the worst case scenario I can come up with here. They should definitely sacrifice the Aerialists. Kills Spattermatcher. And Aerialist plus Moldervine Reclamation is also quite a combo. Well, probably dead now. Alright, I mean, if I take one, then the Warchief is a 5-5, so it matches up well against Cavalier at least. What relevant cards do I have left? I've got the Gauntlets, don't know if that does anything. God's Willing. Also doesn't do much. Yeah, I could attack with a griffin here, hoping they block with aerialists. I guess it's worth a shot. Maybe if I attack with griffin and warchief, they're more incentivized to block. Well, 
Let's hope this works. They could be holding another pump spell. Alright, the third growth cycle. Well, we tried. Bag of Holding. I mean, if they get greedy and draw too many cards, maybe. I don't think we have any pacifisms left, we just had the one. So yeah, now the game plan's just decking the opponent, I think. No way we can beat them the fair way. So just gotta hope they deck. 13 cards remaining to our 9. But Reclamation forces them to draw a card when a creature dies. Yep. But yeah, how do we deal with Aerialists? Because they can just start attacking with that thing. And I'm not sure how we beat that. I'll take four for now. Yeah, I'm not sure if we have any removal left for this Aerialist. And it's a three turn lethal clock. If we sell out a Blade Brand, that would be an option. Uh, I do have a couple Angels left. The five mana Angel that gains four life. Angel of Vitality plus Scarred Barons is two life. So that's a way to maybe stall the game out a bit. Yeah, I could attack with a Thief, draw a card, lose a life, grow the Warchief by one. Don't know if that does much for us. Can probably wait a turn. So two lands discarded with a bag. Yeah, this has been a strange game, to say the least. Yeah, if I find Gauntlets, then Sentinel could technically blocked aerialists so we definitely don't want to be chomping yet I suppose if our vengeful warchief gets enormous then God's willing protection from black can let us attack for lethal so now I'm probably forced to play the barons just so I don't die if they kill the sentinel So you've got a few angles of attack here. Decking them is one plan, but then we'll need to find an answer for the Aerialists. A God's Willing on a big Warchief to maybe kill them, although that seems difficult to set up. Yeah, Inspire Charge would look pretty good here. Yeah, gotta take it since then Gauntlets is potentially still a top deck. But if they have a pump spell, we're dead. That doesn't help. Yeah, just attack for one with Sentinel and Chumblock Aerialist is the play. Not sure what our outs are at this point though. Probably God's Willing on Warchief and somehow try and get in enough damage. Opponent's got seven cards remaining. We have six. That gains me one life. That's not enough to stay alive. But I guess I get a redraw with the Thief. So I've got the two Angels to draw towards. So I guess we'll go for it. Don't think I attack with anything else. Alright, Angel keeps us alive. But now the opponent could gain a ton of life with their life linkers if they want to. Which eliminates the out of God's Willing on Warchief. Got another angel left in the deck, I believe. So that's maybe another way to chum block aerialists. Alright, this figure. GG's. I 
How many cards left? Five. All right, well, don't quite get uh, clean seven wins. Definitely a very interesting deck the opponent drafted. Don't recommend main decking to uh, disenchants and whatnot, but oh well, I guess uh, they probably first picked Soren and kind of tried to build around it. All right, uh, on the play, reasonable enough hand. Not sure if I want to play a two drop on two or if I want to make sure I can play the thief. Depends if we draw land or not. All right, now I can play the fencing ace. Hits a bit harder. And then we can give the thief some wings. Uh oh. The turn three Risen Reef. It doesn't bode well. So I guess we get to draw some cards, our opponent gets to draw some cards, we all get to draw some cards. At least I get to play Griffin without needing to Angelic Gift here. Plenty of gifts. Alright. Being able to give our entire team flying is one way of beating the Risen Reef value. Just gotta hope they don't have a bunch of flyers or reach creatures themselves. A warlord. So you're saying there's a chance. Opponent said go with four mana up. Could have all sorts of combo tricks or bone to ashes. I guess I like Angelic Gift on Thief and then play Chaplain over playing Warlord into a potential counter spell. Or pump spell. It's a good one too. So I might hold off on playing the Blossoming Sands to pump the Aerialists. Could be sketchy to attack with a Fencing Ace, but I think I still do. Nah. Yeah, this seems fine. I still get to play Aerialists plus Angelic Gift next turn if I do this. There is no planar cleansing we need to worry about in blue-green. But a big flyer, that's kind of the biggest concern here. Opponent is down to 8 though. And a Baron's... I guess the upside of playing the Blossoming Sands last turn is that I could have pumped uh, Griffin twice, which could have gotten past the Air Elemental. Yeah, I could draw Bladebrand from Thief. I think I'm down. God's Willing. So if I God's Willing Protector named Blue, this gets in damage guaranteed. I can also just protect what they block, maybe that's the play. Alright, that works for me. So 5, 6, down to 2. Don't think I need to God's Willing here. And I'll put the green mana in play. Alright, so we've got plenty of lethal threats. I guess Captivating Gyre here would be the card that can potentially save them. Or a bunch of healers of the Glade. Opponent found a red mana. Important to point out. Up to six. So let's start with... Probably gifting the chaplain. See what we draw. Hmm, I guess never mind. I can actually play Warlord and God's Willing. Does it matter? Alright, opponent explodes. Fair enough, I'll take it.
Well, we got to seven wins with a deck that I didn't think was very good, but I guess I was proven wrong. Drafted two white decks in a row, so maybe white isn't as bad as I thought. Or maybe we just got lucky, who knows. But yeah, either way, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.